Great, I'm live. Thank you so much. Hey, thanks for turning up. It's uh, it's been a challenging weekend for me. Not sure about you guys. Let me know how it's been, and let me know where you're calling from. I love to know that we're talking to people all around the world. It's absolutely brilliant. Okay, I'm just going to put the. Uh, all right, there's 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 the link. If uh, you want to share with anyone else, sorry it's crossed my face at the moment. Uh, but there's a link to tonight's show, and you can also find this. Excellent. Right, today um, uh, I've got loads and loads of requests asking me to go back over again the amygdala hijack and what that is and what we can do about it. So I'll be covering that first in, in tonight's show. I'm then going to um i'm going to read out uh a mindfulness session that i wrote that's that that's in my book and uh it's called a mindfulness body scan it's not as deep as the last meditation i did uh but you'll find it enjoyable i'm sure you will and i'll read that after we've done the amygdala hijack for now though if there's any questions whatsoever please fire away i'll try my best i'm by myself this week um uh, zane's doing uh other things um so please be kind with me i'll try and respond during the actual show if i can't respond during the show i'll make sure i respond straight afterwards okay so i'm just checking who we've got okay right we're going to fire away on the amygdala hijack the first thing i'm going to show you is an image of the amygdala hijack. And then after I've shown you the image, in fact, there it is. Can everyone, I hope everyone can hear me uh, whilst I'm showing this particular image. Well, that little green thing is the amygdala. And there's two of those either side of the back of our head, right next to our ears, they're about the size of almonds. And these little things have been with us or with the, with the human race for hundreds of thousands of years. And they're part of, they are part of the primitive or sometimes crocodile system that we have. And that's where the brown stem is. That's the, that's the original part of the brain. The light brown is what we call the cortex. And that, is, that has formed um since since caveman times since cavewoman cavewoman times right the amygdala hijack what is it and how can we work on it i'll just hide that picture so you can you can you can, you can see me right the amygdala and how does it hijack well actually thousands and thousands of years ago the human race had a and still has what we call the fight or flight system. And this was a system controlled by the amygdala, controlled by the limbic system, which helped us push a load of adrenaline into the system. And this adrenaline really supercharged our organs and supercharged our muscles so that we can either fight or run away. Regardless of what happened, shortly afterwards, you either you either got caught by the saber-toothed tiger or big bear, so it didn't really make much difference, or you managed to escape, or you managed to kill the beast. Either way, your adrenaline and stress hormones created by the amygdala reduces back to normal. Right, what happens nowadays is we don't get that release, and this amygdala is, re is increasing levels of stress hormones into our system, hormones such as cortisol, such as adrenaline. And really what happens, these things are getting more and more in, into, our, into our system. And we find it difficult to come down afterwards. Now, that's bad enough, but in between that, there is what we call the amygdala hijack. And this is something uh, first termed by a guy called Daniel uh, Coleman in his book emotional intelligence and what the amygdala hijack is is when we get caught in a particular situation where we start to show symptoms of that fight or flight response 
And sometimes the amygdala takes over. So we lose control of our actions. We might do or say things that later we will regret because we have been taken over by the unconscious limbic system. Now, what we need to know is how do we recognize if we've been taken over by an amygdala hijack? Well, what happens is your palms will start getting a little bit hot and sweaty. <clears throat> Excuse me. Your pulse will start racing. Your skin will go pallor. Exactly the same as what the caveman went through in the fight or flight system. Now, what we want to do is to take over control of this automatic amygdala hijack. Because automatic is not good unless you are in a very dangerous situation when, of course, it has, it has a, a, a major use. Well, one of the ways that I work with professional sports people to help with their amygdala hijack is the following. Can you imagine you're a sports person, either a soccer player, a baseball player, a basketball player, tennis player, golfer, and you've just messed up a stroke? Or you're part of a team and you've just messed up a pass? What happens is the amygdala kicks in. You start to feel bad about what you've done. Now, I worked with a real, real good soccer player who, when this kicked in, he used to get very aggressive. And he was getting sent off all the time. He was getting yellow cards and red cards, and it just wasn't helping his team, who many times ended up on the losing side of that particular game. Well, what I taught him and what I teach professional people, uh, both sports people and people in industry to, to do, is what I call anchoring and triggers. Now, what we do is we find ourselves in a nice chair, or on the sofa and we're relaxed and happy. And you're gonna find this after the mindfulness uh, exercise that I'm gonna do in a, in, a, in, a few, in a few minutes time. And what we want to do is for you to feel good about yourself because I'll be asking you to think about a pleasant situation. One day where you are happy and perhaps one that brings a smile onto your face. So what we're doing is we are triggering a nice moment in your life, a happy time in your life. And as a result of feeling happy, what will happen is we're going to, re we're going to release oxytocin, we're going to release dopamine, we're going to release serotonin and neoadrenaline into our system. We're going to feel good. And what I'm going to do then is ask you to anchor that particular feeling. And the way I, I get people to anchor their feeling is put the thumbnail onto the inside of the, the thumb or onto the, onto, onto, onto the knuckle of the, thumb, on, of the thumb. So we're feeling good, we're feeling happy, anchor. And you hold that anchor, you hold it, and you're feeling good, you're feeling good, and then you release. Now, what you've done now, you have just anchored that particular feeling. And it's any time in the future when you need to trigger that feeling, perhaps after an amygdala hijack, perhaps when you're not feeling too good, all you've got to do is repeat where you put that thumb nail onto the edge of your other thumb. And you will bring back those chemicals into your system and it will change your state. You will take over the unconscious control that the amygdala has had on your system momentarily. You will start bringing in your conscious and you will start to think and analyze that situation and therefore preventing the amygdala hijack. Now I've got a little diagram because it's important to know when you trigger the anchor and when you release the anchor. So here's a, here's a little diagram here. So what we, what we want to do, we want to increase the intensity of that feeling, that happiness, so we get those really nice neural chemicals firing around your, your, your system. So as it's going high, we want to, and not too long into that, because we want to really get a nice intense state, and then we will put the thumbnail onto the thumb of the other hand. <coughs> and what we want to do is before we get to the peak state of that intensity, we remove the anchor. So we've set the anchor in the right way. 
<coughs> excuse me, I think I've cut the grass earlier on. And I think I've got um, a little bit of hay figure, so excuse me. So now we've learned about the amygdala hijack. We've learned what the amygdala hijack does, why it comes on, what chemicals it released. And I've given you an idea of how you can prevent that amygdala hijack in the future. Just reiterate, the amygdala hijack is brought on by stressful situations. And this pandemic at the moment causes a lot of stress. So you don't have to wait until you get into a particular situation. Set your anchor now so that you're ready for when any stress starts to come into your system. Recognize that stress through sweaty palms or your heart starts racing and your pulse starts racing. Okay, now I'm just going to check to see if we've got any questions. <coughs> Okay, hi everyone. My goodness, there's lots and lots of people in the uh, who, who are watching. Thank you so so much. Right for the second part of today's short and sweet show, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through what I call a mindfulness body scan. Now this is great for when we're feeling a little bit stressed. This is great for when we've got people who are stressing us out perhaps they might be selfish perhaps they're annoying you well this is a way you take control of your system so i'm going I'm to read from the script that i've got and this script is in is in my book and in fact i almost i i almost forgot guys there's 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 the links to the book now there's a special surprise for you i have arranged for my book to be available on Amazon, the Kindle version to be available on Amazon on the 23rd, that's tomorrow. And that, that will be Pacific Time USA. It's available for 24 hours. Grab the book. You know, it might not be for you. However, I think you'll enjoy it so much. And one of the exercises I'm just about to go through is from, from that book. So free tomorrow. I'll put the link down uh, into the uh, in, in, into the comments late and late later on. Okay. So right, mindfulness body scan. If you're operating machinery or you're driving, you no, know, please stop at this moment in time. I'm going to guide you into a mindfulness relaxed state. So we don't want you to be controlling any machinery, driving or riding a bike or anything like that. The best thing you can do is to sink into a nice armchair or onto a sofa. Lying down is brilliant and you might fall to sleep. If you do, that's fine. Try and keep awake though. Whatever happens, all this is gonna go into your unconscious mind, okay? And you're gonna feel a lot better from it. Okay, so the aim of this mindfulness body scan technique is to increase self-awareness. And it does this by systematically developing an awareness of your bodily sensations. And as I mentioned, it can be done seated. However, it's nice if you could be uh, lying down. And it's better if you stay awake. But if you fall asleep, come back to me. OK, that's a good one. Uh, resting your fingers on your on your stomach or belly will help increase your awareness, particularly through the breathing sections. So I'm going to read from the script because I, I don't want to mess this because the words are very, very specific. And whilst I'm on with so many people, I get a little bit excited and I don't want to miss the key words. OK, I mean, even even in my clinic, when I'm doing this in clinic, I still read from a script. And I'll be looking up every now and again, but for now, I'm going to read this particular script. So, guys, if you're ready, take a moment to settle into your posture and make yourselves comfortable. Close your eyes. The goal in this exercise is to become deeply, deeply self-aware. Aware first of your body and then of your mind. Make it your aim step by step to contemplate things as deeply as possible. Now, self-awareness can become a pathway to deeper self-control and 
self-mastery. Okay, so for the sake of this meditation, this guided meditation, welcome any sounds you hear or sensations that you might feel as part of the process. Don't try to concentrate, block things from your mind or force yourself to relax. Just allow yourself to acknowledge anything that passes through your awareness and treat it as an opportunity to deepen your mindfulness by patiently observing how you react moment by moment to various experiences. Do your best to stay awake. However, even if you fall asleep, that's okay. You will still get some benefit. In other words, let's just go with the flow of things. You can analyze and evaluate things later. For now, just keep patiently bringing your awareness back to the present moment, the here and now of your experience. From time to time, it may help to imagine that you are gently smiling to yourself inside, perhaps even allowing a hint of a smile across your face and eyes, accepting all of your experiences and feeling contentment and happiness here in the present moment. Continue to feel self-acceptance and warmth towards yourself. Forget about the past, forget about the future, forget about everything else and rest your mind on the flow of your awareness. Now begin by being aware of the whole of your body as one, from the top of your head all the way down into your fingers and down into your toes. Be aware of your whole body as one, every nerve, muscle and fiber. Don't try to change anything. Don't try to stop anything from changing. Sometimes things change just by being observed. Self-awareness brings natural harmony and balance back to the body. Be passive, a detached observer. Just be contented to notice what you notice. Feel what you feel. From time to time, I'll give you a few moments of silence to deepen your contemplation in your own way. Take a few moments now to become more aware of your body as one. Now, allow your breath to guide you deeper into self-awareness. Notice the sensations of your breathing. Notice your belly rise and fall. Notice the chest rise and fall. The rib cage expanding and relaxing. Notice even the faintest sensations, even the tiniest feeling caused by that breath around the sides of the waist, the sides of the chest, and besides the arms. Perhaps if you pay deep attention to the breath, you may even notice some feelings in the lower back, the upper back, the neck and shoulders, maybe even sensations elsewhere in the body that accompany that breathing. Now, be aware of the whole process of breathing, all of the sensations as one. Be aware of the rhythm of the breath. Don't try to change the breathing. Don't try to stop it from changing. Just be a passive observer. Let the body do the breathing all by itself. If your mind wanders, that's okay. Just keep bringing it back to your breathing. That cycle of spotting when your mind wanders, calmly accepting the fact and patiently bringing it back to the here and now, the flow of your experience is the essence of mindfulness. Now, let that breath guide you deeper into the awareness of the body. Imagine that with each and every breath, your awareness is expanding, growing deeper and deeper, becoming more and more comfortably absorbed in your body, the here and now. <coughs> Turn your attention to the sensations in your legs. Begin at the top with the hips, joints, and thigh muscles. Be aware both of your breathing and of the sensations 
in your hips. Let your awareness spread over the surface of your skin, deep into the muscles and even into the bones and joints. Now let your awareness spread slowly down through the thighs and through the upper legs, down deep into the knees, through the lower legs, the calves and shins, ankles, and down into your feet. Over each of your toes, one by one, into the very soles of the feet, into the many bones of the feet. Be aware of both legs now as one. Imagine your breath deepening your awareness of the sensations of your legs. Both legs in parallel. Let the breath guide your awareness deeper and deeper into the body. Your mind becoming patiently absorbed in even the smallest feelings here and now. Turn your attention now to your arms. Begin at the top, deep inside the shoulder joints and muscles. Let your awareness grow deeper as it spreads over the shoulders into the upper arms, down deep into the elbow joints, through the forearms, down into your wrists, the hands, the knuckles, the fingers, through each of the fingers in turn, one by one. Imagine your breath deepening your awareness of the sensations in the arms, both arms in parallel. Let the breath guide your awareness deeper and deeper into the body your mind becoming more patiently absorbed, even in the smallest feelings here and now. Become aware of the arms and legs together as one. Imagine every breath is gently deepening and expanding the awareness of your body. Now turn your attention to the trunk of the body. Begin at the top, deep between the neck and shoulders. Let your awareness grow as it spreads deep between the shoulder blades, down through every segment of your backbone in turn, and over and under the ribs, deep into the chest, right down into the belly, deep into the very core of your body. Become aware of the whole trunk of the body as one. Imagine your breath deepening your awareness of the sensations in the chest and the abdomen in the very core of your body, guiding your awareness deeper and deeper into the body, your mind becoming more patiently absorbed in even the smallest things here and now. Next, turn your attention to the head and neck. Begin at the top of the crown of the head and let your awareness expand gently over the scalp and down through the back of the neck spreading across the forehead and down over the temples, the cheeks, over the mouth, the eyes. Be aware of the whole head, neck and face as one. Imagine your breath deepening your awareness of the sensations in the head and neck, your facial expressions, the look in your eyes, guiding your awareness deeper and deeper into the body, becoming more and more patiently absorbed in even the smallest things. Now, become aware once again of the body as whole, the body as one. Become aware of your breathing and imagine the breath is guiding your awareness of your whole body continuously, deeper. Let your body do the breathing. Let go. Let the breathing draw your awareness deeper into the body more absorbed in the body as a whole. If your mind wanders, that's okay. Just patiently bring it back to your breathing. Now take a few moments to contemplate the flow of your experiences more deeply in your own way. Now turn your attention even deeper towards your mind, to consciousness itself all the time aware of your breathing. The breath is the mirror of the emotions. I'm sure you knew that. When you are emotional, people can usually hear it in the sound of your voice. 
the sound of your breath channeled through your vocal cords. When the body is tense, the breath is tense. When relaxed, the breath is relaxed. Be aware right now of the mood of your breath, the emotional tone and character of your breathing pattern. Take a few moments to contemplate your emotions and your breath more deeply in your own way, in silence. Now turn your attention to your thinking. Emotions are the space within which thoughts grow. Emotions shape our thinking, our mood colors our thinking, and our thoughts in turn can influence our mood. Become more aware of your thoughts, judgments, attitudes, opinions, and beliefs, of anything that you say to yourself in your mind. Become mindful even of unspoken thoughts at the back of your mind. Notice deliberate thoughts or ones that just happen to cross your mind. Don't judge them. Just accept the fact that they are happening and allow yourself to become a detached observer of your own stream of consciousness. Notice in particular how you might respond to your thoughts as they occur moment by moment, how you feel about them as they happen. Now, take a few moments to contemplate your thoughts and feelings more deeply in your own way in silence. You have a body, but you are more than your body. You have emotions, but you are more than your emotions. You have desires, but you are more than your desires. You have thoughts, but you are more than your thoughts. You are much more than any of these things. And you can step back and observe them. Even things that seemed very close to your center, you can distance and detach yourself from everything and just watch the flow of your experiences. You are more than anything you can observe. Now take a few moments to contemplate your breathing in your own way and to become a detached observer of whatever enters your mind. In a moment, you are going to finish this exercise and move ahead into the room around you and the tasks at hand, bringing a sense of deep self-awareness and inner calm into your life and into your actions. Think about the room around you. Think about action movement think about looking around and getting your bearings raising your head a little and now begin to breathe a little more deeply a little bit more energetically let your body feel more alive and ready for action breathe energy into your body breathe a little deeper and deeper again until you are ready to take a real deep breath open your eyes and emerge slowly from this mindfulness body scan. Taking your mindfulness and self-awareness forward into life. Beginning now, take a deep breath and open your eyes when you're ready. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed that. We've done the mindfulness body scan. I'll put it onto my page later so that you can Play back this at any time, please, if you wish. You can download and record it to yourself. I think this works great just before you go to bed. Really eases the mind before you go to bed. And don't forget amygdala hijack and anchoring and triggering those anchors are a brilliant way for you to move forward. So I'll try and answer your questions when I finish, uh, when I finish this, uh, this, this show. Uh, for now, don't forget my book, uh, Become Unstoppable, is available on Amazon for free for 24 hours from Pacific time on the 23rd of June. Please let me have your feedback. So for now, stay strong, take care, 
and thank you so so much for coming along and having a chat this evening or this afternoon if you're in the states or other parts of the world thanks again guys take care